Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I was about to get, I was about to say hola, buenos dias. I don't know why I was about to say that. <laughs> what's going on, everybody? This is Scoops Bronson, man. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> I don't know why I was about to say that, bro. Hey, listen. All right, this is the Views Anonymous podcast. <laughs> you can't even introduce yourself, bro. You can't even introduce yourself. Hey, hey, you wildin', man. You was wildin'. Y'all, welcome to the Views Anonymous podcast, man. I don't know what I don't know what this dude is doing today. You ain't introduced yourself. Because that ain't how we do this podcast. Man. <laughs> I know. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I L Scoops Bronson. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, I don't know what podcast you think you're doing right now. But it don't man. matter, man. Listen. First of all, man, how you feeling, man? Because, because, hey, you just started hey, wilding all of a sudden. I don't listen. I I swear to you, I don't know why I wanted to do that. I don't know where that came from, <laughs> but I'm feeling great, bro. Um, man, it's been a it's been a great week. Um, you know what I'm saying? We we found a we found a nice little vehicle to to watch. You know what I'm saying? The movies that we can't watch. So I've been trying to catch up on everything and. Um, find stuff to you know what I'm saying to uh do for the future. And um not only that, man, you know what I'm saying? We've been talking about this Marvel stuff that's been going on. So, you know what I'm saying? I've been super excited about that. You know, um I remember when we did the episode about the phases and uh we didn't know exactly where it was gonna go, you know what I'm saying, from the ending um after endgame, and then here we are now, you know what I'm saying, we're talking about the different possibilities and all the theories and conspiracies that we could possibly get into. So, I mean, it's, it's looking up, man. How you doing? Man, listen, it's been all bad, man. It's been all bad. So I sent you a picture of, you know what I'm saying, some of the shit that was going on down here the other day. So, we, you know, we just got some snow. Like I said, we don't, like down here in South Carolina, man, like we get it every so often. But, like, so we get it this time around. So I chill for a day. So then the next day, I'm like, I'm gonna run to the store, right? Cause it was some it was some shit I didn't get to pick up. So I'm like, man, let me run to the store real quick. I go outside, you know what I'm saying? To, you know, let the car warm up. I go out there, cause you know, I I gotta push the start. I go to push it, click. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Battery dead. Wow. So like, man, damn. So you know what I'm saying? I get some cables. It didn't do nothing, dude. Like it's like completely shot. Ooh. So I gotta take the old lady car. So I gotta go buy a battery. So I'm bad as fuck. I'm like, man, fuck man, I gotta go get this battery. So she's like, yo. She's like, you got the money, right? I'm like, I got the money, that ain't the point. I said, even though I got it, I don't want to spend it on no damn right. battery. She was like, Well, look at it this way. At least you got it. Cause it could be situations where you ain't got no money. You know, your battery day, you ain't got no money for it. You shit out of luck. So yeah, I had the money, had to go spend hundred and ten dollars on the battery. But um so, which it was a good thing. Well, okay, maybe not a good thing, but so <laughs> Monday we was off. It was just it was just too dangerous to try to deliver packages. So, so we didn't work yesterday. So that's when I found out my battery was dead. So what I mean by good thing is, if I would have went out there, get ready to go to work, and then go out there and I like it, just click. Man, that would have that would have messed the whole damn thing up. So yeah, um, get the battery. I put it in. So we all good now. And then they tell us, because we went to work today, and they're like, all right, we're going to do 1130 dispatch, right? Now, keep in mind, we usually dispatch around 9-ish. You know what I'm saying? It used to be like 745-ish. Mm-hmm. So think about 1130. So we like, all right, it's going to put us behind, but okay. So I get to work by 1030, thinking, all right, Maybe we'll get finished a little early. That ain't the case. My God, we don't we don't dispatch till twelve thirty. I'm like, man, are you kidding me? 
But it was luckily I didn't have that many stops. That's why I told you could we start a little later because I had mm-hmm. to stay out a little later. Okay. But, uh, yeah, man, it's been all bad, man. That's what, see, that's why I hate when it fucking snows down here. Because when it snows down here and then they get the freezing and shit and then it's damn black ice all over the place. And it's, just it's just pure and complete chaos. Man, I'm telling you, it's, it's chaos down here, man. Every, everything's shut. The stores and ramshack. It's just... <laughs> it's I know like I am, my boy. I, I know, know I am. That's yeah, another looking. day for us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. We, we got the, the, the snow out here melting on us. Shit, man. Like, the roads are starting to clip in some places, but the bad thing is, like, it's supposed to freeze overnight. Mm-hmm. So, all of those... See, this is what what's killer down here is is the spot, the real shaded areas. Yeah, because like where I stay at right now, like the road on the side of us, it's all trees. So that road is still bad. Mm-hmm. So like now, our, our kids gonna miss another day of school. Well, they they doing e learning, but so they are about to be out of school for two straight days, and then do we supposed to get most snow on Friday? So yeah, it's been, it's been wild down here, man. To say the least, it's been wild down here. I bet, man. Nah, not for us, bro. It's, we got a we got a couple days of it, and then you know everything is is normal for us. We don't get no breaks, don't nothing shut down. You know what I'm saying? We don't. It is. It's like it don't even matter when it come down. We be more so pissed that it's coming down than the fact that it's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But this is gonna be an interesting one in today, man. We we back on our doc shit, man. We we didn't do a doc all last month, so yep, yep. So it's gonna be interesting to get into this one, man. For sure, man. For sure. So um, first and foremost, um, you know, what I'm saying this is one that we've been talking about for a minute. Um, I know that we were supposed to do this a while back. We've had this on the list forever, and uh. I remember when I first watched this, it threw me off because I didn't really understand everything that was going on. The title kind of threw me off more so than anything. That was really what actually drew me to it. So I thought mm-hmm. that it was like, you know what I'm saying, like some cult shit. Yeah. Come to find out that it's far better than I expected. <laughs> so <laughs> it's far better than I expected. Um, so uh, what we're talking about today, man, is the documentary on Netflix, Murder Amongst the Mormons. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is a story about a dude who fooled a whole fucking religion. And when I tell you nothing but joy lit up in my heart, <laughs> nothing but joy lit up in my heart when I watched this again. Just to know that this white man got over on them like this, bro. This man was bamboozling the church of Jesus Christ and of Latter-day Saints or whatever you say that shit. And the only reason I say this is because when I lived in Columbus, I had a run-in with some Mormons. And they kept coming Mm -hmm. over my house on Sundays. And I was trying to basically (laughs) slowly let them down to tell them, sir, I don't want to join your church. But they kept coming and they kept coming and they wouldn't stop and they was relentless and i even went so far as to go to the church with them Mm -hmm. to go view the church to go see it and then i start getting very very aggressive with my questions and then eventually they stopped because my aunt came over and she was a jehovah witness Mm -hmm. and then they ended up battling it out and it was great (laughs) (laughs) it was amazing it was amazing. And then what was even funnier than that was the whole time all this is going on, and I don't care about neither one of them. It was just great, but it was just like, yes, this is what it's all about. <laughs> Dude, this guy, Pure man, foolishness. Man, you was a fucking nut, man. <laughs> Listen, okay, so you 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 mentioned something, but you left a little something out. You said that he fooled a whole church and religion. Yes. He didn't just fool that. This dude was basically tampering with history. Yes, like this this motherfucker said that he had letters from our uh, uh not oh, letters, I wouldn't even I didn't even want from... to get into that yet. I didn't oh, I was okay, gonna, okay. I want to get into that later because yeah, that's just, that's just, where he that's where he stepped his game up. Wait, wait, he's talking about <laughs> stepping his game up, man. Because like my whole thing with Mark Hoffman is the fact of okay, you can get lucky, 
and find a document, right? Mm -hmm. But how is this one guy of all the people in the world, he's finding everything. Mm -hmm. Like, everything. Like, this dude said he got a letter from John Adams. Like, how is this one person getting their hands on all of this history, but nobody else can get the original documents, but he's the only guy. It's like, come on. For a minute, it seemed kind of kind of Bible when you first watching it, but once they get to like the second episode and shit, you're like, all right, man, y'all y'all didn't realize this. Like well, none see, of this seemed peculiar to you. See, this is this is the thing, right? When it first happens, you don't even pay attention to the fact that he tells his wife. Dory, I think her name Dory. Yeah, Dory. You don't even pay attention to the fact that he tells Dory once he finds that one document. I think I'm going to go into business for myself doing this forever. Yeah. Now, I don't know why that didn't strike me odd when I first heard it. I don't know what how that slipped out of out of you know what I'm saying just my whole attention span, but yeah. it did. So, you know what I'm saying. First and foremost, my man got an old Bible. I'm sorry, not an old Bible, old Book of Mormon. Mm-hmm. I think I got one of them still too, but uh, he got an old Book of Mormon, <laughs> right? And, and between one of the pages, it just so happens to be this this letter that's in the book. So they've peeled it apart. He looks at it, you know what I'm saying, astonished. He looks up at his wife and says, do you know what this is? And it just so happens to be some sort of letter about Joseph Smith. If you don't know who Joseph okay. Smith is, huh? No, I was I was gonna say, yeah, Joseph Smith, you're right. So but you also have to mention that they said that the, that they bought the Book of Mormons mm-hmm. from listen to me now, Joseph Smith granddaughter's sister. Boom. So not Joseph Smith's granddaughter. <laughs> His granddaughter's sister. sister. Apparently, she apparently she's not Joseph Smith's granddaughter. <laughs> Just know that. <laughs> Just know they're not related. So, um, yeah. So, for anybody who don't know who Joseph Smith is, Joseph Smith is basically the founder and creator uh, of Mormonism. Um, basically, he was led to um a spot in the woods by an angel named Maroni and he basically was told to dig up in the spot where he found two golden tablets which contained the um the knowledge and uh <laughs> the word of Jesus Christ and God and he basically put that into a book to basically uh give to people to help decipher what the bible says yeah, well, not tablets, but plates. Well, they they call them gold oh, plates, no. but trust me, they they call them golden tablets. They say they say plates in this, but they call they also call them golden tablets. Oh, oh, okay. this is yeah, this comes from this comes from uh, once again this comes from extensive weeks of talking to Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, I, this this is this is another reason I was so into this. I'm telling you, man, when I was in Columbus, these dudes was faithfully coming to my house every Sunday to talk to me. Um, about becoming converting to uh, uh, Mormonism, dude, that is nuts. I've only yeah. had encounters with uh Jehovah Witness. I had this one lady grew up with them, and like, I all I did was open the door, like, oh, I, yeah. like I opened the door, and I'm like, nah, you know, I'm not interested, I'm good. And so, did you then, get the awake or did you get the watchtower? Uh, I, I don't remember, I don't remember. But like, so all I did was just answer a question. She was mm-hmm. just like, well, she, she asked me, she was just like, you know, was I interested? I'm like, I'm not interested. So she asked like, how you doing? I'm like, well, I'm good, but you know, that's I'm kind of doing something. That, that, that was a mistake. The that's next she week, she showed back up. Yeah, man, you, just, can't, you, can't, you can't answer the questions, brother. Yeah, oh my God, man. Like I dealt with this lady for like a month and a half. Yeah, to, yeah, I, I dealt with them. I dealt with them for like five months. Dude, it was just like, okay, I never answer another question again. But um, I just thought it was kind of funny the other fact of like what we later found out about Mark Hoffman is just like how wild. Number one, of a habitual liar that he is, but 
the storytelling that he can come up with. Listen, to come up with the fact you're not gonna disrespect the great Mark Hoffman like that. You're not gonna do that. Listen, Mark Hoffman that's, was a that's genius. what Mark is. Mark Hoffman was a genius, and, and, and he was a he was a okay. great he was a great creative, and he was a great storyteller. He wasn't a liar. He, he was a liar. And this is what <laughs> see, I didn't want to say this yet. This is the one thing. If anything was funny about this, mm -hmm. this whole thing was Shannon Flynn, right? Oh, so to ask Shannon goodness. Flynn at the very end, right? Because it's funny you say that, and I was gonna bring this up. So they asked him about Mark Hoffman and uh, uh about what he was doing. I forgot how the question actually they asked went. him about his but, they asked him about his work. And, and he was like, he said, don't make me answer that question. Yeah. Please don't make me answer that question. Please don't make me answer that question. And then he answered the question. He said, <laughs> he said he was marvelous. I'm like, yo, you said like three or four times, please don't make me answer this question. But then you say that he's remarkable. He's marvelous. He's one of the, the only people that could have pulled this off. Because he hey, said that he didn't want to make him famous. Uh, he didn't want to, you know, basically big him up. Yeah. But that's exactly what he did. He ain't had no choice because he had to bow down to the master. This nigga was the show enough of the forgery game. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga was the truth, nigga. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, okay, okay listen, man. So, we got to we gotta that? basically, hold on real quick. We got to basically uh, uh, break this down a little bit more. So for the people who are wondering, like, what the hell are y'all talking about? Basically, there was this man named Mark Hoffman who um, found um, a letter or a alleged letter that was made out to Joseph Smith, who was basically the founder of Mormonism once again. Um, and basically, he sold it to um, <laughs> he sold it to the Mormon church. And basically, he was for i want to say like maybe what three four years he was basically like the plug or all of these uh mormon documents that were being uncovered and found um for the mormon church and for uh mormon historical um what do you call them historical document dealers yeah that basically. a good way to put it yeah yeah so that's, that's a good way to put it yeah that's, that's basically what it is however he also um, decided to commit murder and suicide. Well, I don't know if it was suicide. I think. Well, we, we'll get into that. We'll get mm -hmm. into that. But um, but yeah, like what I, what I was trying to say was for him to to come up with what he did to that Bible and to say, "Yo, I'm not gonna say that it was his granddaughter. I'm mm -hmm. gonna say it was his granddaughter's sister." Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who had it? And it was just like for him to come up with the stories that he came up with and to choose the documents that he chose to get. It's just like first of all, the whole collector's game. I've always thought that that was an odd thing for the simple fact that I'm even talking about just even like for like sports and shit. Because I always thought that it was weird to like have like as big as a history and a sports as I am, like I don't need like a signed jersey from an athlete. Like I don't need yo, I got the or, or, the original letter that you know Chairman Fred Hampton wrote, you know what I'm saying, when he was in jail. Like I got, mm -hmm. I got the original letter. Like I don't need all that shit. Like I ain't gonna so, lie, signed jersey, I, I'm with that though. I'm not, man. I, I just, I just, to be honest, I just don't care that much. You telling me? Like, I mean, I care, me, but it's just like you're telling me that you got to throw back the white Clark jersey and he signed it. You don't want that? I didn't say I didn't want it. Okay, that's what I'm that's saying, what I'm, I'm saying. Paying for it? Oh no, no. I'm, I'm saying like you I'm know, saying, what I'm saying like as far as like you know how when you go to the game they sign your jerseys and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about like actually being a collector for those items. That's a no, that's a different no, no, game. No, 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 yeah, that's no. a different game. I'm with you on that. No, because there's no, no. there's so, no so way to you, tell if it's real or not. So basically, what you're saying is, for me to be standing 
beside a whole bunch of people and everybody's holding out jerseys in a pen waiting for another human being to sign that bitch? No, I'm not doing that. Wait a minute. You're not trying I'm to get not... your jersey signed? No. Not even Dude. like at a meet and greet? A meet and greet is different. No, I'm saying like, would, I'm you, would you do there, it at a meet and greet? If I'm already there, that's just yeah. like, I went to, um, when I went to Florida State playing Clemson, um, this was 2016, mm-hmm. and they had the Heisman House there at the time. Mm-hmm. So they had Derrick Brooks in there. Um, so it's like basically you go in and you could like take a picture with a Heisman trophy. So yeah. me and Mark had took a picture with a Heisman trophy. And then it was another line where you stand in the line and Derrick Brooks was there and he was like signing shit. Mm-hmm. And Mark like, yo, you want to send? You want to get something signed by Derrick Brooks? And I love Derrick Brooks. Like, I I was a low key Tampa Bay fan because they had Derrick Brooks and they had their award done. So you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's two Florida State legends. I was like, I'm not standing in the line for a dude to sign something for me. Like, I that's just it. not me, man. Like, like I look and I love Derrick Brooks, but it's just like. I just feel look, and I'm not trying to make fun of nobody. Look, you do what you do, uh, yeah. all that little type of stuff. This is just this is just S. Dot Foster. I'm just not standing in the line for another human being to sign or something for me. Okay, like, now, I'm not doing now, it. A better question, a better question. Would you stand? W- would you go get a letter, right, written by Jesus? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, not written by Jesus, written to Jesus from one of the apostles. So how am I getting it? What do you mean? You you find it in a in a Bible from Jesus, <laughs> okay. Craig, Craig taught his sister. Hey. <laughs> hey, I am extorting somebody. Okay? Yo, Brother, I got let the me tell original you letter. Like, you know what? I'm what? In fresh hey. air, man. Hey, listen. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting some. I might not be getting some M's, but I'm getting some K's. You know what I mean? Nah, you you go. Like, hey, you getting way more than that, bro. Hey, I'm saying I might even get some M's. Like that's that's you, different. You might be able if, to if get some money involved coming. Hey, if hey, if it's if it's sending funds my way, then yeah, I think the whole point of what I'm trying to say is just like all this money that these people are spending on like these old documents and stuff. It's just like, yo, like y'all ain't got nothing else better. And that's the thing. I think some people get so rich to the point where it's like, they just don't really have anything else to spend their money on. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what a lot of these people were doing in the eighties. Like they just had money and it's just like, all right, well, I'm going to spend a whole bunch of money on some shit. That's I mean, to some people it's, relevant but you know to some people it's irrelevant and to me it's irrelevant like i just don't care about having like old documents you know what i'm saying i'm fine with looking at old pictures i, I love looking at old pictures of you know what i'm saying of whatever like new york or even like i watched a whole documentary on uh on king henry the eighth castle you know what i'm saying so it's just like yeah i love history and stuff but i just don't think that i would be in a market of just collecting old documents from people from all back in the day. But I well, think this, Mark is the, this is the interesting was, thing though. And the reason I say this is interesting is because um during the what 1980s, this this is like the late 80s, Mormonism was only 150 years old. Yeah. Don't forget that. I guess it was only 150 years old at the time. So People finding these documents and all this other thing, the reason that it's important for that to happen and the reason that it's important to have these dealers and these people who are collectors is because this validates the, um, I don't want to say myth, but I guess the lore of the of the religion. You know what I'm saying? The, the uh, Yeah, I mean, it basically validates the religion. It gives it validity because now you have historical records, you have historical context to um basically just say like okay you know we are um we basically have everything that we need to have you know what i'm saying and we pretty much good to go so i think once you know what i'm saying like once that happened and once they were able to um 
once they were able to pretty much use that as a basis, you know what I'm saying, to pretty much let people know, like, yeah, this is all real. Because, I mean, like, you got to think about this. This is a, a, a basically a young religion compared to all the other ones. And they're basically saying that, you know, this this guy is talking to a, a angel who leads him to tap. Like, it's, it's sounding like a revised version of Moses. You know what I'm saying? So taking that and then bringing him into, you know what I'm saying? Like bringing it into modern day, like you want things to kind of prove that this is something that can happen because, you know what I'm saying? With other religions, you got scrolls and you got, you know what I'm saying? Like you got hieroglyphic writings and all this other stuff to kind of prove all the rest of the stuff. But this one, you really don't have too much anything. True, true. But then I also... Like he, I'm glad you brought that up about the whole thing about the religion only being 150 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. So it was something that was new, but it was just heavy in um in Salt Lake City or pretty much the whole state of Utah. And like so, Mark Hoffman to come at a time in 1985, well, really a little earlier because it really kind of started in 1980, and for him to come at the time that he came in. Man, like you are the perfect person for this because you brought up a great point about when Mark Hoffman put that put that letter in that Bible and told his wife, yo, I'm going to get into this business, right? So mm-hmm. then it starts with Hoffman has a letter that he said that's basically penned by Lucy Smith, which Lucy Smith was John, well, Joseph Smith's wife. Right. So he ended up selling that letter for 40K, right? Mm-hmm. So then... He's like, all right, if I'm going to play, I'm going to play big. So then exactly. he comes up and says that he has the salamander letter. You know <laughs> the piece de resistance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he said he had the salamander letter. And it's like, okay. This is, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but this is when this nigga became a legend. Oh, yeah, definitely. He really became a legend in this one because... The, and and this is what makes it even well, makes it funny for me, and I'm pretty sure you found it funny as well. Is that the Salamander letter told a different story? Mm-hmm. So now the whole basis on a religion with the Salamander letter is saying that everything that y'all believe is a lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <And> that- <laughs> Nigga, it had these niggas questioning their whole religion, bro. It had them questioning their whole religion. Yo. You want to talk about comedy? That was, that's comedy for me because like, they was in fighting in the church because of this letter. This letter comes out right now. We told y'all that 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 Maroney came and talked to. I think that's how you say his name. At least that's what I remember his name to be. But Maroney comes to talk to Joseph Smith, this angel that appears out of nowhere and just picks this random white man who's a settler in in, in uh, uh, America. To, to find some tablets that was buried, some golden tablets or golden plates that was buried by God that had the his his will and you know what I'm saying his his uh uh his rules and instructions on there. Meanwhile, this whole time it's been all kind of natives and Aboriginal people here, and Maroni didn't think once to go talk to anybody that was dark skinned. <laughs> he shows the he white man Joseph Smith in 1830, and niggas been here since like the 1500s. So you mean to tell me this angel waited 300 years to pick somebody? Fubar. Now, after this, this letter comes out, right? But the the letter says that no, it wasn't Maroni the angel who who showed uh, uh, Joseph Smith. Where the where the uh, ruse was, it was a white salamander. And when I tell you that the when they got to clashing and arguing about this, I perked up and sat up in my seat and I said, "This is where it gets good." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, that is some of the most funniest stuff to see the reaction oh, of people goodness. when this happens. And like, look, this happened. Here in not only just in America, but this happened with Christianity with mm-hmm. the Da Vinci Code. Me and you talked about this mm-hmm. when we did the Da Vinci Code, and that was just like, a book. Yeah, and and that. But the thing is, 
the theories on it make so much sense to the point where people felt threatened that oh shit maybe it could have went down a different way mm-hmm. and like that's what this was saying and what was so I hate to say this but what was so great about Mark Hoffman was Mark Hoffman had the real people names like Martin Harris who witnessed this whole silent man the letter thing mm-hmm. so it's like they, I mean they got a picture of Martin Har- Harris and everything so it's like it makes it make sense with everything that he came up with yeah so then Mark Hoffman don't stop there because yeah, he's becoming well known at this point with the Solomon letter. And, um, but what makes it even crazy is so first, okay, people first, he comes up with the letter in the Bible that Joseph Smith granddaughter sister had. Right. Mm-hmm. So then he comes up with a letter from Lucy Smith. Then he comes up with the Salamander letter. But we ain't done. <laughs> now, <laughs> the McClendon <laughs> collection comes out with five diaries in it, right? And they're saying that these five diaries was written in between the years of 1831 and 1838. <laughs> so when the McClendon le- uh, letter well, collection come out, now the church is like, okay, we can't let any of this shit get out. At all. So they're like, this is what we're going to do, Mark. We're going to pay you 300K, people. A church that pays no taxes. You know what I'm saying? And Salt Lake City, Utah has <laughs> 300K to just spend on a collection so nobody else can see it because it threatened their religion. Because yeah. it says something different. Yo. Now I'm thinking to myself, like, now watching it the second time around, mm-hmm. it's like you already know, but it's like even the first time I watched it, it's like y'all don't think that this is kind of funny. Like, how is this one guy coming up with all of these so called important documents by these so called important people, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to this religion, that nobody is questioning anything here? Well, this is the this is the best part about it all is that towards the end when they were um, when they kept talking to the people um, that they were interviewing, you know, what I'm saying you heard them continuously say, you know, what I'm saying we we knew that something was fishy about it, but because everything seemed so right and there was really nothing to go off of that was wrong. We just didn't want to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about this. Like, this dude is bringing you all of this information. We don't know. They don't know where he's getting it from. They don't know how he's getting it. Um, even the one dude, remember, he said, it, he was like, it seems like this is like some Indiana Jones. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's Indiana Joneses. Like, this one dude is getting all of this documents, all of this information. Um, we don't know how he's finding it. We don't know where he's getting it from. We don't know who his sources are, where it's connected to. But every time we bring it to our historians, every time we bring it to, uh, you know what I'm saying, bring in any outside dealers or anything, it seems, you know what I'm saying, it, it comes out that it's legit. So they're basically looking at this dude like, yo, he is basically they plug on Mormon history. This is true, and they also was sending the stuff off to people that were uh would make it authentic. Yeah, because they got these machines that'll be like they could test paper to tell you how mm-hmm. old the paper is, how old the ink is, mm-hmm. and all this type of stuff. And all of those people were saying like, "Yo, this this is real. Like this paper exactly. is you know one hundred and something years old. This ink is this old. We so everything matches." And so the techniques that Mark Hoffman was using to not only fool these people who whole job is is to test old paper, old ink, all this type of stuff like that, for him to be able to forge all of this shit and to fool these people who their profession is to prove that this stuff isn't authentic and saying that it is, you got to get the dude's props when it comes there. This is my biggest issue when it comes to Mark Hoffman before we get into the shits. My biggest thing with him is is how he is not only altering a religion, but he's altering history. 
Well, he's not really altering history. Well, he he not got yet. people. He well, he got people to believe some of the things that he just basically made up. Because like even these handwritten letters, it's like yo, like no, maybe he took from. See, this is my whole thing with history, anyway. And even when it comes to religion, like I, I don't get deep into it with people mm-hmm. because I know people get really offended. Mm-hmm. But it's just like when, when I say question everything, it's just the fact of like I'm not saying I'm questioning the the belief of the people or whatever right. the case may be. I'm just questioning like some of the stories that they're saying that happened. Like, okay, for, for sure. instance, right? You know what I'm saying? I was at church last month. And he was uh, having this thing called 40 and Hungry. And they was talking about how they was getting ready to start fasting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they were saying that, um, I can't remember who it was. But anyway, so the dude fasts for 40 days. And so but when he fasts, he fasts with no food, now, no food and no water for 40 days. And he said that he wasn't hungry in 30 to after that. Really? Man, listen. Who the fuck is out here ain't Man, consuming no food and no water for 40 days Man, and they good? First first and foremost, let me tell you something. The, the foolishness of, of that whole thing makes no sense. That, Jesus died for your sins. And then for you to be ungrateful and, and not eat and drink after you've been blessed with the opportunity to do so. Who who do you think you are? Like, dude, and I'm just like, yo, like, and I'm just looking around like, y'all... Like really, I really believe in this. Like, and, and, and like that's my thing. And so, I just question like some of the stories of some of the thing that's going. Like, okay, they say you know what I'm saying. Oh, dude, walk on water. I just want to, I just want the record to show that that was as Dot Foster that said that, not Scoots Bronson. <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying, man. Because I've been wanting to say that forever. I always wanted to call him old dude. But the fact that he said that makes it a thousand times funnier. (laughs) (laughs) That shit makes it that much funnier. And listen, I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm just saying, like, yo, like, are you hearing some of the stuff that these people are saying? And it's like, so (laughs) It's all metaphors, though, bro. Yeah, but still, That's how it is. And it's just like it just it just it just throws me off. Mm-hmm. So, I, what I mean by ultimate history is like he he could really like I said he changed words in the Salamander letter. Well, that's it, the best part about all of it is because there was no such thing as the damn Salamander. All of this <laughs> shit is fake anyway. That's what, that's that just lets you further know just how unrealistic this shit is. That's what I'm saying. So you mean to tell me, right, that you have all of these officials and all of these heads of whatever y'all want to call them? I don't, I don't know what they call them. I don't know if they priest or leaders or whatever. Or I don't, I don't know what the title is for them. I, don't, I, I forgot. I know certain. I know the missionaries. They call them elders. That's that's the most I remember. But um. So you got all these people that's supposed to be like high ranking or whatever, because it got to be a hierarchy. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that makes sense. And for a hundred and at this point, 150 years. Oh, no. This is in the 80s. So that's what, 30 years ago. So 150, 160 years around this time, right? Mm -hmm. Because because. Right now, Mormonism is 191 years old. They got, uh, did I say right? No, 192 years old. They got eight years before they 200. So um, you got 150 years to get this right. 150, 160 years to get this right. So the fact that y'all really don't have y'all's foundation settled just further lets you know, like, this shit ain't what... They think it is like if this didn't question, if this didn't make people question the faith um, of Mormonism, then I, I don't know what would at this point. At this point, people just want something to believe. 
Exactly. And you. It, no, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I was gonna say you're right. I'm yeah. just gonna say that you're right. Yeah, because I mean, like, to for people to to have a dude bring up some documents out of nowhere, first and foremost, um, it ain't like it's a myth going around. Like it's these, you know, what I'm saying, like, you know, usually when we find like historical documents, it was all it's always something to back it up. Like, yeah, like this is the letter that Lincoln wrote. Right before he died, the night before he died, to Mary Todd or whatever. Like, so we always know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's anytime we find something, it's always something that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got that can back it up at least. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's always something. Like, um, like when they tore down the statue, the, the when they just tore down the um the Confederate statue, and then they found the, the two time capsules. You know what I'm saying? Like they found a picture, of, or they supposedly found a picture of Lincoln um, getting killed, but it was just an illustration that somebody made. And then it's supposed to be like a book or of like an account, a diary or something. And then it's something else that they put in there too. And who knows? That might be fake. We don't know for real. I honestly don't even care because nobody wants to hear about the Confederates. They losers. So, um, it just it, it it just cracks me up at this point because it's like at this now that we know that this dude is giving these guys false information and false documents that the fact that even they believe it just lets you know like all of this shit is a game. It has to be. That's that's what it for for Mark Hoffman. That's what it turned into. Yeah, because I mean, like he he's a he's an atheist, and he's sitting here like, oh yeah, I, I know how to get all these motherfuckers. Like, I'm just about to just make some shit up. Let me go ahead and write a few letters. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put them in this fish tank and 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 put these battery wires in this uh salt water and uh put this taser in here. I'm gonna oxidize it, you know what I'm saying, and make it, you know, what I'm saying burn out a little bit, and then shit, they gonna believe it's real. They won't know the difference. And then here he goes, you know what I'm saying? He done, he done befriended the, the the document dealers and, you know what I'm saying? They talking about how great it is. They all on TV defending them. And then when the, what is this, the, Mc, the McEllen collection? Is that what, what it was called? The McClellan. 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 Yeah. The McClellan collection comes out, right? This man stands at making $300,000. 300000 He get, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he uh, what's the dude named Chris Stevenson? Steve uh, Christensen. Steve Christensen. Damn, I had that all fucked up. Steve Christensen, right? He getting, he, he talking with my man, my man, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I could broker this deal, but I need a cut of it. He like, yeah, yeah, cool. So he, you know what I'm saying? Then he goes, wait a minute. I don't need him to broker no damn deal. I'm the plug. <laughs> <laughs> I make all this shit by hand. You think that I'm about to make all this and go through all the time and effort and lock myself in a room away from my wife to make all this stuff? And, and and here you go. Now you think you about to get a cut in even after I already gave him the letter and sold it for 40K? Nah, my boy. Can't even have that. And what does he do? My man does the most diabolical thing of all time, bro. He blew my man up with a pipe bomb. Yo. So now, this is where I say he committed suicide, too, because he also got hit with a pipe bomb. I think he did that to make himself look innocent. See? That's what I was gonna say. That's why I said it wasn't suicide. Okay, so so how attempted. it goes is I'm sorry, attempted. yeah, attempt, yeah, attempted. So <clears throat> October the fifteenth, nineteen eighty five. So it was at eight fifteen. So they say that a letter, not a letter, but a box, a package arrived for Steve Christensen. Mm-hmm. Right now, Steve had a meeting with Randy Ru- uh, Rugby at eight o'clock. Yep. So somebody was already expecting. So uh, so Randy was expecting to meet Christensen at eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. So he shows up late, and they're like, "Yo, like a bomb just went off." So, and like you said, it's a pipe bomb where he puts the nails all the way all the way around it and all this type of shit. So people say that you know later they said that it was a witness saying that yo we saw a dude with a, a green Letterman jacket with no letter on that bad boy. Mm-hmm. So all the investigators, bomb squad, so everybody is at this place because this bomb just went off. All right. So an hour later, 
what I'm saying? At 928, another bomb goes off. Now, the person that died was Catherine Sheets, but the bomb was attended for Gary Sheets. Mm-hmm. So you like, okay, so by the title, it have you thinking, oh, shit, the church has something to do with it, this. So the church, so you, I'm thinking the first time I watched it, and by the name of the title, I'm thinking, like, yo, the church is taking these people out. <laughs> Same <laughs> thing. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. When I heard about bomb, when I heard the word bomb, I said, oh, damn. So I'm thinking they're taking everybody out. And then it makes it makes even more sense when a, the next day on the 16th, Mark Hoffman get hits with a bomb. That's right. But the dude he who just so happened to get all of this information. The dude who just so happened to have all of these documents. Now, all of a sudden, his car blows up, but mm-hmm. he don't die. So you thinking like, okay, so this dude, you know, got lucky. Maybe they put the bomb in a bad spot. You know, maybe they put the bomb. I don't, I don't know. It was just weird to think that this dude, you know, his hand kind of fucked up. He had a limp for a while. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't even really have, like, severe burns like that to be, you right. know what I'm saying, to be all 100 with you. So, so then you thinking like, so... The first two bombs completely took somebody out, but this one don't take him completely out. Nope. So, so Mark Hoffman is being looked at as you know at, at first as a victim. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying they're like, oh man, you know you survived this. Who do you think bombed you? He got all these people on TV. You know what I'm saying talking about him. You got uh you got Shannon Flynn talking about him. You got Brent. Uh, Brit Metcalf, like, oh, he's a great dude. I don't know why anybody would, would do this. So now they're trying to figure out, like, okay, so we got to get some suspects here. Mm-hmm. So then they start looking into uh, Shannon Flynn. And Shannon was the person that actually Mark Hoffman calls to take a picture of the Salamander letter. Yep. So he was, like, the first witness to even see this, this the Salamander letter or whatever. So those two dudes are tight. Like, they would go out, you know what I'm saying, um, riding in his sports car, you know what I'm saying, his Toyota, you know what I'm saying? And um, Real and quick. Like, okay. This was another thing, too. Don't forget what you left off, though. But this was another thing that threw me off about this whole thing. When dude was taking pictures of this shit, he was getting this shit laminated. No, you, yeah, you can't, you can't do that. That's, that's what was throwing me off. I'm like, why are you getting these old ass documents laminated, bro? Can you do that? I don't think that. I think that makes it less authentic. When you That's do what that. I'm saying. Like that. That was just throwing me off. But go ahead. I, I forgot to add that in there. Yeah. So they're going out because he said Mark like to like the speed and shit. So like they speeding and all this type shit and like shooting the Uzis. And then you know what I'm saying Shannon got stories of when they went to uh, when they went to New York. Mm-hmm. To see an art dealer out there, he was like, you know, Mormons don't supposed to drink. But Mark was like, yo, I, I can, I can drink and not get drunk. So mm-hmm. he was talking about how he was drinking and all types of. So him and Shannon are, you know, what I'm saying, cool dudes. Yeah. So they start to investigate into Shannon. Come to find out, Shannon basically got that Uzi illegally. <laughs> so now he gets locked up, and now he's become the prime suspect mm-hmm. of bombing the three different places and killing two and attempting to kill one. So not to mention, not to mention this dude is a damn dealer. He's yeah. a, he's a document dealer, a rare document dealer at that. So if he is connected to this dude and he's uh, seeing all of these documents that he's bringing and taking pictures of and everything else, he has more than enough motive to be the killer. So once again, Mark Hoffman is a genius. This is true, and I think that he knew that those gun that those uh those guns were illegal. But also, mm-hmm. for some odd reason, Shannon, you need this new boy explaining to me why do you got bomb books in your house, my guy? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you got how to make a bomb book in your house? So that's another thing that kind of made him the key suspect. And like you said. He has motive because him and Mark Hoffman are cool. Okay. So then they're asking Brent, 
and Brent, you know, he don't believe it because he was dealing with him as well. But also a person that we haven't brought up is uh is Al. Uh, what was Al last name? Um, Al Rust, right? So Mark Hoffman goes to Al, and he was a uh, he was a collector, uh, a rare coin collector and a document collector. Mm-hmm. So Mark is down on some money. So he asked Al for, if I'm not mistaken, I think a hundred and fifty thousand. It was either a hundred or a hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So he said that he was good with the bank. So he was able to get, you know what I'm saying, like a post dated check or whatever, a cashier's check, and give it to Mark. So Mark can, you know what I'm saying, do what he do. And he was like, yo, I'm gonna get you the money back or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yo, he did Al wrong, my guy. He ended up <laughs> He ended up giving Al a, a fake check. <laughs> when he finally tried to pay him back, this dude you know, for the whole fake check. The dude go to the bank to go cash in. They're like, yo, this is a fake check, my guy. Bro, the king, bro. Yo, Mark, Mark is a fucking asshole. The fucking so, king. So then, so so Shannon, he gets out. He gets out on bond. And so then he passes a lot of tech to test. But the thing is, when the table started to turn, they did a lot of tech to test on Mark Hoffman. Mm-hmm. They said my dude <laughs> got a plus 14, which is the highest score ever recorded on a lot of tech to test. Mm-hmm. So they 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 in the wind. So they like the only thing that we could do at this point is we have to prove that these papers aren't authentic because if we could prove that then that shows motive. Mm-hmm. Because the thing with uh with Christensen, Christensen could really fuck up the whole operation. So that was one of the reasons why Mark took him out. Also, Gary Sheets could fuck up the whole operation as well. So he missed on that one and killed my man's wife. So yeah. when Mark, then they started going into the backstory of Mark, talking about how he was an Eagle Scout. And how it was this whole time, this one time where he took his friends out, they were doing a, a treasure hunt, and he finds a, 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 a jar full of coin. So then it comes out that he knew that they was going to do a treasure hunt. Well, it was probably his idea. It was like, yo, y'all, let's go on a treasure hunt. So this dude, the day before, <laughs> <laughs> this dude buried some coins in the damn ground, and then he finds it, and everybody thinks he's this damn genius. Because he found the treasure. So, like, he developed this thing of, like, yo, how he loves attention and how he can fool people. And then he also figured out how to beat the lot of tetra tests. Yo, listen. Yeah. Taught himself for, for damn near 20 years. 20 years on how to beat a damn lot of tetra test. Yo. Yeah. Mark, Mark got here, got down. Listen. <laughs> Mark is out here, got down. I can't even. I, see, you keep calling him a genius, but I don't want to call him one, man. But it's he just is. Like, God, man. It's, it's just the things that he was able to do and the things that he was able to come up with is just crazy. So now. They take it to uh, the FBI. I remember, I remember the dude's name was George. It was George uh, Thornton Meyer or something like that. So they give it to him. And But the thing, the one problem that he has is he practiced like Mormonism or whatever. So he's like, okay, so when it comes to the Salamander letter, of course, he's going to want it to be unauthentic because he don't want it to be real because that's not what he believes. Mm-hmm. So he calls this other guy and like, yo, what religion are you? He was like, well, I'm a non-practicing uh, Catholic. Perfect. You good for the job. So they go into the lab and they're looking at all of these documents, right? And trying to find out if they're authentic or not. So at first they said that it was authentic. But what they noticed was that there was cracking in the ink. And they couldn't understand it. So mm-hmm. then once they they went, because, you know, George was like, yo, I can't have this. Because George said he always went into something 
if if people say it's real, I want to prove that it's fake. And if it's fake, I want to prove that it's real. So he's to the point of like, yo, I'm not losing. So I'm not satisfied with saying that this document is real because y'all say it's real. I'm trying to prove that it's fake. So he goes back and start looking at everything again. And then he noticed that not all the letters are cracking. And but then also some of the cracking are different in the same letter. So then they have to figure out how to duplicate the cracking mm-hmm. and the letters and stuff. So then they end up figuring it out that it's fake and that put motives back on Mark. So Mark is first looked at as a victim. Now he turns into the prime damn suspect. Yeah. And then after that is it's all downhill from there. <laughs> it's all downhill. From Why there. you sound disappointed? <laughs> because man, my man was on the road, bro. Like he was really getting busy, bro. Like on some real shit, bro. He was really getting busy. You know what I'm saying? Like he was really doing his thing. Like he was he was setting the the, the balance in in, in in the in the good and evil right. And somehow, some way, they just found a way to just mess everything up. My man was getting paid. He was he was fooling these false prophets, and you know what I'm saying. The devil just had to come and destroy everything once again. <laughs> <laughs> Sick, man. Hey, sick. So so George ended up proving that it was fake, that it was all fake. So then they they uh so they cleared the charges on well I think he still got in trouble for the uh for the for the gun. Mm-hmm. But I think he ended up getting probation. I don't think he served any time for it. But he, I mean I'm pretty sure he was happy that his name ended up being cleared. Uh, yeah. from bombing uh, Christensen and uh, Kathy Sheets or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So the the wild, but see that, that that turn, those turn of events really really fucked me up because, like I said, it's called mur- murder amongst the Mormons. He's mm-hmm. not even Mormon, like you say, he's an atheist. But he ended up taking out Mormons. But it's like they make you, they give you the appearance of like, yo, you got yeah, this, like, this, like this Mormon church is going on. Yeah, like this Mormon church is out here, you know. Cause see, I thought when I first when I first started watching it, I was thinking that the church started bombing these people because they didn't want it to get out that everything that everybody believed for basically their whole life is yeah, is a bunch of bullshit that is fake. Whole life. For 150 years they've been spewing bullshit. That's yeah. basically what's been going on. Yeah, they've been lying to the people of Utah and in the Salt Lake area, and they've been lying, just flat out lying. Damn angel waited three hundred years to tell a white man about some gold with some writing on it, and didn't tell nobody else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I'm not believing that. When they, when I, matter of fact, that's that's one of the things that when the when the um when the when they came in the um what's the niggas called. The uh, <laughs> the um, I'm about to call them the converters. It ain't the converters. What do you call them, motherfuckers that go to different countries and and uh, um, oh my god, um, missionaries, missionaries. Yeah, damn. <clears throat> so when the missionaries first came to my house, and that was one of the first things I asked them was like, you know, what I'm saying like, tell me, you know, what I'm saying about the religion. And they had brought that up, like Joseph Smith and anything else. And then like that had crossed my mind. I was like, wait a minute. You said 1830? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, so all these people that was on the on the continent before that, and he just decided to go to Joe Smith? <laughs> like Joe Smith Jr. was the man that he picked? Nah, my boy. I, I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that. You, tell, you telling me that all these motherfuckers, the Mayans and the Olmecs and all these niggas, they done been talking to aliens and everything else. And then you telling me, nigga, an angel waited for a white man to get here? Nah, my boy. Something ain't right about that. <laughs> <laughs> Something ain't right about that at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Aliens and shit was supposed to be here building pyramids and all this other shit. And then the angels just decided to talk to the white folks, huh? Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> Just saying, bro. Oh man. Like okay. You me. Yeah, true. So so basically, what ended up happening is um, so Mark ended up ended up going on trial, and mm-hmm. he ended up, he ended up pleading. Yeah. He ended up pleading guilty. He got five five to life. And what really what really took the uh, death penalty off the table was like he said that he would explain to everybody how he did what he did oh, and how he made the bombs and you know and all that type of shit. So he basically confesses to everything. And um so what 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 does Mark end up doing? So Mark told him how he came up with the dude it was crazy how they like the, the dramatization when they showed like yeah. how he burnt the paper yeah and then like poured it into this thing and then like Bro, made the he, ink let me tell you how diabolical my man is though when he told the story about when they was kids and they went on a treasure hunt and before they went this nigga buried a jar of coins <laughs> <laughs> and then when they go on the treasure hunt, nigga, he's the one that finds it, bro. How this nigga is a genius. <laughs> he's, I mean, we got you. Listen, we got to start giving some of these dudes credit, bro. Like the fact that he was able to be that smart, that young, bro. Like we, re- we really missed the bar for my man Mark Hoffman. Like Mark Hoffman really. He should have been like an international spy, maybe like worked for, you know what I'm saying, like an uh, international affairs or something like that. Because we wouldn't even have had to go into Iraq if we had Mark Hoffman. But this is the thing, though. This is the thing, though, Scoot, that you forgot. My man altered coins. Yes. Sent it to the United States Treasury. Come on, and they said that it was authentic. Bro, know? this nigga. He was 12. now. Now this is this is where he ups his game, though. Now we can talk about it because this is where he ups his game. This is where, like you've been saying this whole time, my man is trying to alter history. My nigga wrote a poem as Emily Dickinson. <laughs> nigga. <laughs> this nigga is a genius. This nigga wrote a letter as fucking Abraham Lincoln, bro. John this nigga Quincy was writing, Adams. bro. This nigga was writing a letter back and forth to himself as George and Martha Washington. The nigga's a genius, bro. Man, you got to see. give him for him to be able to fool these. Like, so this, that, this, all this. Uh, I can't even get it out because I'm so excited. What this documentary shows is that none of this shit is real. Everything they've been telling us is a lie. The Declaration of Independence may not even be real. And if it is the, the real Declaration of Independence, then I don't think that that's the one, the original one. But I'm telling you, man, all of this shit is a hoax. And he proved it. The fact that, like you said, he sent the coin to the Treasury and they said, oh, yeah, this is the real deal. Nigga, you have, cert- you have certificates and you have certifications that prove and you have cast and all this other stuff that prove that it's not what it is. How do you not know this? And he was 12, man. Bro, 12 years old, bro. I got a 12-year-old. He ain't altering damn coins. That you know of. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga probably in there writing the code to fucking hack the metaverse right now, bro. <laughs> you don't know. Hey. You don't know just... what these kids do on their phones nowadays. True, true. But like Mark Hoffman, yo, like, like, yeah, like, listen, you're right. The dude, the dude is a genius, and he's one of the best people to finesse mm-hmm. any situation, probably mm-hmm. in history. This dude finesse the situation better than Marjorie Deal, my guy. Listen, bro, when you are fooling the government about not even the government, when you fool the Federal Reserve about some shit that they made, come on, man, bro. And like it tur- turns out, the only thing, the biggest, the dumbest mistake that Mark Hoffman made was himself- well, yeah, because now it turns out to be stupid. Because now you sit here, <laughs> did for- <laughs> you did it for nothing, <laughs> and, and it could have been, it could have been all bad. 
Yeah. Um, if, if that bond would have, you know what I'm saying, really did what it was exactly. supposed to do. But he could have just gave dude a cut of the money, bro. For true, all that. true, but also the fact of why you had to deliver the package. Yeah. To to uh now, granted, yeah, you don't want it going through a whole different people's hands and they could uh-huh. end up taking it to the wrong place. Or yeah. stealing it. Yeah, something something else could have happened. True. But at the same time, you got yourself ID'd at the scene. Exactly. And you kept the letterman jacket. So yeah, that that ended up being a dumb thing. But like you said, I think like with all situations. Not all, but most situations, greed end up. Oh yeah, taking over for sure. Yeah, taking over for sure. Because I think that I think what Mark could have did was micromanage the shit. All right, so I got this one letter. I got forty k for it. All right, let me wait about two three years. I nah, I he found- he did the right. He was on the right path. He didn't have to do none of that. He was doing everything right. What I'm gonna tell you what I what really messed him up, man. What really messed him up. Is not going through with that damn deal, plain and simple. If he would have just, if he'd have just did what he had to do, give dude a cut, he'd have got his money, and who knows, he still could have been out here fooling the the, the church, of Jesus Christ, and Latter Day Saints to this day. Yep, but he could have had them believe in all kind of shit at this point. This is true, because. What what we do know, and this is another reason why I ended up thinking it was a church at first before you know we end up seeing the evidence, mm-hmm. is the fact of when when they talk about it's like especially like the Da Vinci Code, the religious wars that went down, yeah, and like the people that was like uh what was what was the uh the pale dude name that was going around killing people for the teacher, um the blonde dude. That would uh, torture himself. We're not torturing himself, but beat himself. Are oh, you talking about it? Um, Solomon. What's his name? Solomon. No, um, it wasn't Solomon. It was. Um, um... What? Well, anyway, he like they say that there are people that was out in history like doing that shit to protect the story, the original story of Jesus Christ, basically. Hold on, and it's dude. like. That had that have you thinking like, oh shit, like the Mormon church is out here killing people to protect their religion so they can, you know, not have people silence. question what's silence. silence. Yeah, silence. And like that's why I thought it was them. But then once we get the, you know, the end story that ended up being marked the whole damn time. And it was a damn oh, solo. Wait, act. You thought it was a nigga like Silas out there doing that for the Mormons? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, seeing that. That's what made me thought that it was a church at first. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I see what you're saying. I always thought it was a church to begin with because I'm like, well, especially once he got blew up too. I was like, oh, okay, they don't want they don't want nobody getting to these documents. I thought that they was just trying not to pay my man for the documents. See, that's what that's what I was thinking. I thought they were just trying to get rid of a uh of a loose end. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we got the document, we gave him the 30k, but he's a loose end. He might I mean, because you gotta think about it like how you gonna be a religion if you ain't off the few people? Exactly. You feel you me? have to. The Catholics did it. The the Muslims did it. The Christians, the Christians did, it. did it. Christians still doing it to this day. Muslims still doing it to this day. Um, you know what I'm saying? Rome. Never mind. That's a bad joke. I ain't going there. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, nah, it, it it turned out it turned out to be a a very interesting documentary um sure. and and it also it, it I, honestly man it has you thinking like it, if you are a heavy religious person like it really has you thinking like oh shit like if, if this dude had this religion on ropes like i mean he had them like he had secret not secret but he had meetings with the one um the dude that ran that church you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like they was gonna get us through 300 k for a letter that that's not even real. That Amen. this dude just made up in a room. Hey man, I mean it's the same thing. Like every time you watch fucking National Geographic or the news when they go digging up in Egypt, they keep bringing out these busts of what these old Egyptians would look like, and they looking more and more like white people. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it's 
it's wild. But I, I will say that Mark Hoffman is probably the best. Well, the coach. Uh, that well, the, 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 the mod, the the best modern day finesse finesser of all time, yeah, well, of modern sure. day, for sure. So, Mark gets that award for sure. You know, saying I'm with you on that one. He is he is the ultimate finesser. He may be the he may go down as the finesse goat. He won them, especially yeah. of this of this time period. Yeah. Him him and Bernie Madoff. <laughs> you ready for the fire flames, bro? Let's do it, man. All right. Yoga fire. Yoga flame. All right, man. So um I'm gonna go ahead and go first, man. Let me tell you something. For me, watching this again, um, and re re uh reliving this. <laughs> after watching this the first time and not fully understanding because I wasn't really paying attention the first time, but paying attention to this and actually rewatching this and actually seeing what was truly going on. Yeah, this is my favorite documentary of all time, only because this is the type of level of um of chaos I would like to bring into you know what I'm saying, into certain people's <laughs> world. So I'm this is a five for me, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, this is shit. a full complete five. RIP to the people that lost their life, but yo, this nigga is the GOAT. Wow, a five, man, a five yeah, burger. Man. Uh, I'm not gonna go as far as the five. Um, uh, it, it was a lot of information. Um, also to see somebody just toy with the government, to toy with people who, who, I mean, I don't know if it, if it's a degree. Uh, it has to be like to use the machinery that they was using to try to test the authenticness and, and the stuff that they was testing, they had to have a degree for it mm-hmm. for this dude to finesse all of these people and to then start murdering people. And like, like I remember, uh, Brent, uh, Metcalf was talking and he was like, yo, like I met him the night before he bombs, uh, Steve. And he was just like, this dude at like, like nothing was, like he was acting like he wasn't about to bomb somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not gonna go as far as that. I, I would give I would give it a four. Um, it was a, it was a lot of information, and then when it comes to you add the whole religion factor of like torn with these people, but then also just to think that how does a church? In Salt Lake City, Utah, have three hundred k to spend on some diaries. Yo, what world are we living in? But I'm gonna give it a four, man. I'm gonna give it a four. I, I think I think it was pretty good. A lot of information to take in, and uh, Shannon, Shannon said it best, man. He said that dude was marvelous, or whatever he said that he was. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, man. Listen, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, where where can you go wrong with a dude like that, man? I I respect it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm so happy that he did what he did. And uh it it hopefully it goes to show a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, how much uh you know what I'm saying, how, how much that you, you know what I'm saying, can be out here believing in some stupid shit when the truth of the matter is uh it's it's not even to be believed in the in the first place. So um yeah, let's get into coming soon. Yes, sir. Coming soon. Coming soon. All right. So now that we uh now that we basically Stump the mud hole in your beliefs in religion. We also <laughs> stump in the mud hole. <laughs> we also stump in the mud hole in your belief in existence. This next episode we got coming up for you. Uh it's this will really be a fun one. Um it's uh Netflix's Don't Look Up, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. Man, listen, you talking about a uh a very interesting movie. This one was super interesting. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of things in this movie that I can't wait to talk about. To be honest with you, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. Especially if we can go down that wormhole of like, you know, 
the whole thing of existence, the whole thing of what ifs, the whole thing of basically they said that this happened before and the possibility of happening again. And if you would believe people who say that they have proof that this is going to happen, mm-hmm. that's the whole thing of like Charlemagne and always use, uh, he mostly says that, well, I don't really listen to the breakfast club anymore, but he says it a lot on, on brilliant idiots. What if God came back? Would we believe that, that there's God, if he said that he's God. Exactly. Like that's the same thing. If some, if a scientist tell you, yo, there's a meteor on the way, the same thing that if you believe that there was a meteor that came in, well, they say that it was a nice age and then a meteor came and then it reshaped the whole earth or whatever and we came as humans and all the type shit so if you believe all that type shit (laughs) but it's just like if someone told you yo there's a meteor coming like would you believe it like you know what I'm saying so it's going to be interesting to to really talk about that yeah I mean you really wouldn't even have to believe it I mean you could look up and see that motherfucker coming if it's big enough (laughs) (laughs) Ain't nothing to believe. That's the that's the crazy part about like that was to me that was the crazy part about this whole thing like watching this and just seeing just how uh, maybe I should save this. Yeah, save it. Go ahead, save it. Yeah, because yeah, okay. So this is well. Let me let me add this to it. Right. Mm -hmm. So because right now I'm watching the purge, the forever purge. Right. Mm -hmm. And I noticed a common thing amongst. (laughs) <laughs> all of these purge movies and it's that whenever the fucking purge is going on right whenever the purge is happening it's always these white extremist groups that's like living it up during the purge mm-hmm. nobody else like it ain't like no like you don't never see like the african uh <laughs> rebels or you know what i'm saying like uh you know what I'm saying? Like the Harlem highlighters, like you don't never see like they'll never show you like the bloods and crips out here like getting down. It's always like these white extremist groups that's really doing what they do during these so-called purges. And that just strikes me odd. Uh-oh. So in a situation like that in that movie, I can imagine that that's something that they would definitely go to. Like yeah. there's gonna be a cult, and they're gonna be standing outside, and it's gonna be that one weird dude with the long hair that's like, "The Rock is coming to take us to outer space," and then like it's gonna be like a handful of niggas that believe him, and they're gonna be out there praying to the comet as it's coming down. Like, yeah, crazy. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about this shit. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, we got We definitely got to get into what we would think would happen in that situation. Because I got a whole goddamn thing that I think is gonna happen. Now that's now that's what I can't wait for. Yeah, because I I got one. It might not be as as passionate as yours is gonna be. Yeah, but I I got one too. So for that's sure. gonna be fun to do. That's gonna be fun as hell. All right, man. So you know what I'm saying. Check us out Friday. We also have a what we watching. So stay tuned for that. Um. Man, I'm I don't, I don't know if uh nah I don't want to do that. We 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 talk about that offline. All right, man. So um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you follow us on social medias on Instagram and Twitter at View and Nine Pod. Also check us out on Facebook at V A Pod Watch Group. Um, also man, if you feel like you know what I'm saying you enjoyed this or any other episode that we did, and you would also like to you know what I'm saying rate and review, you know what I'm saying leave us a fire flame or whatever. Make sure you hit us up on the socials. Um, let us know what episode you're talking about by just leaving the title. Also, um, hashtag fire flame, and then um, yeah, yeah, just add us at View and Nine Pod or hit us up on the VA Pod Watch Group page. Also, use the fire flame emoji one through five emojis to let us know what your rating was as well. Yes, sir. Y'all can follow me at uh, s.foster8 on Instagram and Twitter at 28 minutes or less pod on IG. 
go to the podcast on all major platforms. On um, the last episode that's out is still the Ray Donovan episode, Ray Donovan the movie. Um, people are responding to it. I appreciate that. So go check that out on all major platforms if you haven't heard it yet. And uh, I got some new stuff that's cooking up. So be on the lookout, man. Other 28 minutes or less. For sure, man. Also, I forgot to say it, man. Follow me on Twitter at Scoots Bronson. Um, and with that said, man, thank you for tuning in once again. Thank you for listening once again. This is um, where we end it all. Um, like they said, Hollywood, man, that's a wrap. Okay.